The Araucanian War was a long-running conflict between the colonial Spaniards and the Mapuche people. Most of them were fought in the Araucania. This was a Spanish name given to the regions of what we now know today as Chile. The conflict began at first as a reaction to the Spanish conquerors attempting to establish cities and force the local Mapuches into servitude. But it evolved over time from sieges, slave hunting expeditions, to pillaging raids and punitive expeditions. This was a long conflict that stretched over nearly three centuries, but today we are only going to talk about the initial years of this war. So, let's begin. The valleys near the Cordillera Nahuel Buta were initially a crucial area of warfare that the Spanish tried to secure south of the Bobo River. The Spanish intended to use Mapuche slave labor from the thickly populated adjacent valleys to mine the place's gold riches. Serving the Spanish in a gold mine was a dangerous activity that resulted in the deaths of a large number of Mapuches. The Mapuches primarily refused to serve the Spanish because they lacked the Andean Mita tradition of forced labor, setting the foundation for the battle. By converting Mapuches to Christianity, the Jesuits hoped to reduce hostilities and ultimately end the war. They were momentarily successful in imposing the defensive war of 1612 to 1626 strategy but their conversion efforts were thwarted by Mapuche chief's vigorous defense of polygamy, which the Catholic faith considered immoral. Mapuche leaders value polygamy as a way to form more alliances through marriage than a monogamous marriage permits, according to experts. When the Mapuche male population was unstable during wartime, polygamy may have been seen as an important population strategy. The Battle of Reno Guelen, fought in 1536 near the confluence of the Nubla and Itata rivers between a portion of Diego de Almagro's expedition and a huge group of Mapuches, was a precursor to the Arauco War. The conquest expeditions of Pedro de Valdivia mark the start of the war. During the early stages of the conquest of Chile, the Spanish conquistador Pedro de Valdivia led a nine-year war to reclaim Santiago, which had been sacked by the Mapochos under the command of their chief, Michi Malonco, on September 11, 1541. Valdivia desired to expand the territory under his control and, despite suffering injuries from a fall from his horse, decided to lead a land expedition into Araucana. In 1544, Juan Bautista Pasten led a naval expedition that included the ships San Pedro and Santiago to explore the southwestern coast of South America and the Strait of Magellan. The expedition sailed from Valparaiso, entered the port of San Pedro, and landed in what is now Concepcion and Valivia, which was afterward named for the commander. He returned to Valparaiso after encountering heavy storms further south. Valdivia moved out in 1546 with 60 riders, guides, and porters crossing the Itata River and being attacked by Mapuche warriors near the Bobo River in the Battle of Quillacura. Valdivia decided to return to Santiago after locating a location for a new city at what is now Penco, which would become the first site of Concepcion, realizing that proceeding in such a hostile area with such a little force would be impossible. A fresh expedition was launched in 1550, with a naval force led by Pasten and a land army led by Valdivia, consisting of 200 Spaniards mounted and foot, as well as a number of Mapocho allies. On the banks of the Bay of Concepcion, they intended to reconcile. Beyond the Itata and Laja rivers, the expedition reached the banks of the Bobo River. As they explored the region, they fought multiple battles with tribes of Mapuches, killing many with minimal harm to themselves. The Spanish marched toward the sea through the valleys of the Laja and Bobo Rivers towards the shore at Penco, after spending nearly a week in the area and encountering growing resistance. 
They camped for two days on the banks of the Andalien River, between the river and a lake, where they were attacked in the Battle of Andalien on the second night by a huge force of Araucanians led by their Toqui Ainavillo. The nocturnal attack was repulsed in a fierce battle, with one Spaniard slain and many others, particularly their horses, wounded. They moved on to their rendezvous at the Bay of Concepcion after a day of healing their wounds. There, Valdivia began building a fort at what is now Penco. Pastena's ship arrived in the harbor on February 23rd, bringing supplies and reinforcements, as well as materials to finish the forts. Valdivia founded the city of Concepcion del Nuevo Extremo on March 1st. The fort was completed on March 3rd of that year, and nine days later, the Battle of Penco was attacked by the biggest number of Mapuches ever seen. Despite the Spanish force's tiny size, this force was broken and defeated. Despite the local tribe's subsequent submission, Valdivia dispatched an agent to the Viceroy of Peru requesting additional forces, knowing that completing the conquest of Araucana with the only the forces at his disposal would be impossible. He planned another expedition to erect the Fort La Imperial on the banks of the Imperial River after reinforcements arrived at Concepcion in 1551. He then proceeded to Concepcion to plan a new expedition and await reinforcements from the Viceroy, who had promised to send forces by sea. Valdivia withdrew with 200 soldiers in the direction of Fort Imperial, leaving orders for the fresh troops to disembark on the Tierras de Valdivia that Pastén had located previously. He ordered Jerónimo de Alderete to drive inland and build a fort to secure his eastern flank after passing through it on his route south. To accomplish this, Alderente traveled to Lake Villarica and built a fort there. Meanwhile, Valdivia's column moved south, joining the reinforcements supplied from Peru under Francisco de Villagra's command. The town of Santa Maria La Blanca de Valdivia was founded there. Valdivia returned to Concepcion in 1552 after garrisoning these additional locations where he discovered large placer gold mines in the Quilacoya River Valley. Valdivia led a third expedition to Tucapel Pueren, Confines, and Arauco, where he built forts. In their fort building, the Araucanians offered no resistance to the conquistadors. The Quilacoya gold mine opened in October 1553, and vast numbers of Mapuche were forced to work there. The Mapuches gathered a council in 1553 and decided to go to war because of the expansion of Spanish armies in their region. They chose an extremely powerful leader named Caupolicán as their Tocui, wartime commander, and Lautaro as his vice Tocui because he had served as an auxiliary to the Spanish cavalry. Lautaro stormed the fort at Tucapel with 6,000 troops under his command. The Spanish garrison was unable to hold out against the attack and was forced to flee to Puren. Lautaro took the fort and set fire to it, knowing that the Spaniards would try to recover Tucapel. Valdivia launched a counteroffensive with a smaller force, but his army was quickly surrounded and slaughtered by the Mapuches at the Battle of Tucapel. This was Pedro de Valdivia's final battle. When he refused to acknowledge defeat, he was caught and later died in prison. The Spanish regrouped their forces quickly after the setback at Tucapel, fortifying Fort Imperial for defense and evacuating Confines and Arauco to strengthen Concepcion. However, Araucanian tradition required a lengthy victory celebration preventing Lautaro from exploiting the Spanish position's inferiority as he desired. It wasn't until February 1554 that he was able to assemble an army of 8,000 soldiers, just in time to face a punitive expedition led by Francisco de Villagra at the Battle of Marihueo. 
Despite this new win, Lautaro was once again unable to take advantage of the chance due to his people's festivities and beliefs. Concepcion had already been abandoned by the time he arrived. He was unable to continue the offensive with his remaining soldiers after burning it, and the campaign came to an end when the warriors dispersed. Villagra reorganized his soldiers in Santiago, then returned to Arauco in 1554 to bolster the Imperial and Valdivia fortresses, allowing the garrisons and their Indian allies to invade the neighboring Mapuche towns, burning houses and fields, and killing everyone they could find. Meanwhile in the north, news of Lautaro's conquests sparked uprisings by the previously subjugated Promaucais and the Mataquita River Valley and the Picunche in the Aconcagua River Valley in 1554, but these were put down. The Real Audiencia in Lima ordered Villagra to rebuild Concepcion in 1555, which he did with the help of Capitan Alvarado and 75 colonists. Lautaro invaded Concepcion again with 4,000 warriors after learning that it was being rebuilt. Alvarado tried to combat Lautaro's army outside of the city, but he was defeated and fled to the city chased by Lautaro's army. Only 38 Spaniards were able to flee the city's second devastation by water. Following this victory in 1556, the Promaucas sent a message to the Mapuche of Arauco promising food and warriors to join their army in a campaign against the Spanish in Santiago. Lautaro planned an attack on Santiago after his victories in the south and communications promising reinforcement from the north. He was unable to pull many troops from the main Mapuche army for his campaign to the north due to the ravages of the recent disease and the needs of the war against the Spanish, who were still controlling cities within Mapuche territory. He had to rely on recruiting fighters from the subjugated Mapuche and Permaucais north of the Itata River and were now encouraged by Lautaro's past victories to revolt once more. When he visited the areas under Santiago's control, however, he began retaliating against the Promaucais, who refused to join him, causing extensive damage and depopulating the region. The refugees sought aid and protection in the city. On his northward march, he reached the Mataquito River in October 1556. As a base of operations against Santiago, he established a fortified camp near Teno named Peteroa. Lautaro ambushed a small Spanish force from Santiago on their first probing. A greater force, led by Pedro de Villangra, stormed Pedroa's stronghold over many days, but were unable to capture it and were forced to flee due to floods. With his fortunes deteriorating and more Spaniards rallying behind Villangra, Lautaro retreated to the Maule River, seeking to establish himself there. However, Juan Godez's Spanish cavalry chased Lontaro to the Maule River, cutting down stragglers and destroying one of Lontaro's detachments. Lautaro's army managed to get the better of them, but was forced to retreat across the Itata River. Captain Gudez emerged triumphant from his pursuit and instilled dread in the Promalcais by destroying their herds, fields and homes, as well as cutting off their heads as a lesson not to call upon the Mapuche army or provide assistance to them. Francisco de Villangra moved southward in January 1557 to aid the remaining cities in their fight against the Mapuche army led by Caupolicán. Lautaro eluded Villangra, allowing him to pass to the south while re-entering Santiago with a new force led by Panihualgo and comprising friends. Lautaro's torture of the terrified local Indians in order to extort food, on the other hand, had caused discord among his friends. After a disagreement with an allied commander named Chilan, who accused Lautaro of acting like the Spaniards, his allies withdrew from him after the army reached the Mataquito River at Lora. He relocated his surviving force, a league upriver, 
and set up a fortified camp on the Mataquito River, surrounded by a carizal at the foot of a wooded hill. Local Indians, who had been tortured by Lautaro, had revealed its whereabouts to Francisco de Viagra. As he sped north, Viagra sent news to Juan Gómez near Santiago to meet him. The Spanish forces met without Lautaro's knowledge and marched during the night over the Caune Hills to the hill overlooking Lautaro's camp on the Mataquito River. On April 29, before daybreak, Viagra launched a surprise attack on the camp, killing Lautaro and achieving a resounding victory by destroying the camp. In 1557, Garca Hurtado de Mendoza was named interim governor of Chile after Jerónimo de Alderete died in Panama while returning to Chile. He went south from Peru with a far larger force than before, 600 troops, six pieces of artillery, and a thousand horses. He arrived in La Serena and had the governorship rivals Francisco de Villagra and Francisco de Aguirre imprisoned and sent to Peru before placing his own men in charge of the province. When he landed on the island of La Quirquina, he ordered the reconstruction of the fort at Concepcion. Mapuche were soundly defeated. Another battle followed. It was called the Battle of Lagunillas. It ended in terrible failure for the Mapuches and their fortress at Andalican was captured. So that's all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. Till then, see ya.